The Special Court for Sierra Leone, or the Special Court, SCSL, also called the Sierra Leone Tribunal, was a judicial body set up by the government of Sierra Leone and the United Nations to prosecute persons who bear the greatest responsibility for serious violations of international humanitarian law and Sierra Leonean law. Committed in Sierra Leone after 30 November 1996 and during the Sierra Leone Civil War. The court's working language was English. The court listed offices in Freetown, The Hague, and New York City. On 26 April 2012, former Liberian President Charles Taylor became the first African head of state to be convicted for his part in war crimes. <inaudible> Origin On 12 June 2000, Sierra Leone's President Ahmad Tijan Kaba wrote a letter to United Nations Secretary-General Kofi Annan asking the international community to try those responsible for crimes during the conflict. On 10 August 2000, the United Nations Security Council adopted Resolution 1315 requesting the Secretary-General to start negotiations with the Sierra Leonean government to create a special court. On 16 January 2002, the UN and the government of Sierra Leone signed an agreement establishing the court. A contract was awarded to Sierra Construction Systems, the largest construction company in Sierra Leone, to construct the building that would house the court. The first staff members arrived in Freetown in July 2002. On the 10th of March 2004, the new courthouse building of the Special Court for Sierra Leone was officially opened before an audience of national and international dignitaries. As of April 2012, over 40 states had contributed funds for the court's work, with the most notable African contributor being Nigeria. In 2004, 2011, and 2012, the SCSL received funding from subventions from the United Nations. Jurisdiction The SCSL had the jurisdiction to try any persons who committed crimes against humanity against civilians that included, murder, extermination, enslavement, deportation, imprisonment, torture, rape, sexual slavery, forced prostitution or any other form of sexual violence, persecution on the basis of politics, race, ethnicity or religion, and other inhumane acts. In addition, the court would have jurisdiction to prosecute those who violated the Geneva Convention of 1949, as well as Sierra Leone's Prevention of Cruelty to Children Act, 1926 for the Abuse of Girls and Malicious Damage Act 1861. However, the court does not have jurisdiction over those under the age of 15. Further, it was superior to any court of Sierra Leone and could take precedence in cases of possible conflicting jurisdiction. Previous amnesties contrary to the remit of the court would be invalid. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Punishment. All sentences should be carried out within Sierra Leone unless there was no capacity to deal with the accused, at which point any states pursuant to the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda or the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia who have exceeded a willingness to host the accused for the tenure of their sentence can hold the prisoner. Enforcement would be carried out by the court. For a detailed discuss of the sentencing practice and punishments imposed by the Special Court for Sierra Leone read Sharam Dana, The Sentencing Legacy of the Special Court for Sierra Leone, 42 Georgia Journal of International and Comparative Law 615 2014. Commuting sentences would be up to the state in consultation with the court. Structure. The special court consisted of three institutions, the Registry, the Office of the Prosecutor, and the Chambers for Trials and Appeals. Registry The registry was responsible for the overall management of the court. Registrars Office of the Prosecutor The current prosecutor, Brenda Hollis, previously the principal trial attorney in the Charles Taylor case, was appointed by the UNSG and took up her office in February 2010. The prosecutor and her team investigate crimes, gather evidence and submit indictments to the judges. 
The deputy prosecutor is Joseph Kamara, a Sierra Leonean, nominated by that government and appointed by the Secretary General. Kamara took up his post on 15 August 2008. <laughs> Chambers The statute of the court indicated 8 to 11 judges. Three would serve in the trial chamber of which one would be appointed by the Sierra Leonean government and two by the UN Secretary General and five would serve in the appeals chamber of which two would be appointed by the Sierra Leonean government and three by the UN Secretary General. At closure there were 12 judges, of which seven were trial judges five UN appointed—including one alternate—and two nominated by the Sierra Leone government. The remaining five were appeals judges, three of whom were appointed by the UN and two nominated by the Sierra Leone government. Judges were appointed for a term of three years, with an option for reappointment. Appeals Chamber Trial Chamber I Judges Trial Chamber II Judges <laughs> Former judges Jeffrey Robertson United Kingdom 2002 to 2007 Appeals Chamber quit under allegations of bias over publication of a book vilifying the roof Raja N Fernando Sri Lanka 2004 to 2008 Appeals Chamber died Topic <inaudible> Indictees <inaudible> <inaudible> The statute of the Special Court for Sierra Leone outlines four different types of crimes with which the court can charge individuals. They are crimes against humanity, violations of Article 3 common to the Geneva Conventions and of Additional Protocol 2 war crimes, other serious violations of international humanitarian law, and crimes under Sierra Leonean law. If found guilty, sentencing could include prison terms or have their property confiscated. The SCSL, as with all other tribunals established by the United Nations, does not have the power to impose the death penalty. Thus far, 13 individuals have been indicted on charges of committing crimes against humanity, war crimes, and other violations of international humanitarian law. No individuals have been charged with crimes under Sierra Leonean law. A total of 23 people have been indicted in the SCSL. Proceedings against 22 people have been completed, seven are serving their sentences, one died while serving his sentence, eight have finished their sentences, three have been acquitted, and three have died prior to the conclusion of the proceedings against them. Proceedings against one person, Johnny Paul Karoma, are ongoing, he is a fugitive, although he is believed to be deceased. Overview The list below details the counts against each individual indicted in the court and his or her current status. The column titled H lists the number of counts if any, of crimes against humanity with which an individual has been charged. W the number of counts of war crimes and violations of international humanitarian law, CSL the number of counts of crimes under Sierra Leonean law, and C the number of counts of contempt of the court. Note that these are the counts with which an individual was indicted, not convicted. Topic. Civil Defense Forces CDF. Three of the indictees were leaders of the Civil Defense Forces CDF, i.e. Alyu Kondewa, Moinina Fafana, and former Interior Minister Samuel Hinga Norman. Their trial started on 3 June 2004 and concluded with closing arguments in September 2006. Norman died in custody on the 22nd of February 2007 before judgment after having undergone a surgical procedure in Dakar, Senegal. The trial proceedings against him were accordingly terminated. Topic: <inaudible> Revolutionary United Front Roof. Five leaders of the Revolutionary United Front Roof were indicted, Fode Sanko, Sam Bokhari, Issa Hassan Sisse, Morris Callan and Augustine Gbao. The charges against Sanko and Bokhari were dropped after their deaths were officially ascertained. The trial for Callan, Gbao and Sisse began on 5 July 2004. It concluded on 24 June 2008. Final oral arguments were conducted on 4 and 5 August 2008.
Topic: <laughs> Armed Forces Revolutionary Council (AFRC). Three of the detained indictees belonged to the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council (AFRC): Alex Tamba Brima, also known as Gullet, Brima Bazi Kamara, and Santiji Borber Kanu, also known as Five Five. Their trial began on the 7th of March 2005. The only indicted person who is not detained and whose whereabouts remain uncertain is the former dictator and AFRC chairman Johnny Paul Karoma, who seized power in a military coup on the 25th of May 1997. He was widely reported to have been killed in June 2003, but as definitive evidence of his death has never been provided his indictment has not been dropped. <laughs> Charles Taylor The former president of Liberia, Charles Taylor, was accused of involvement in the Civil War. Taylor was originally indicted in 2003, but he was given asylum in Nigeria after fleeing Liberia. In March 2006, Taylor fled from his house in Nigeria and was arrested at the Cameroon border. Taylor was extradited to the SCSL following a request to this effect by the Liberian government. He was then immediately turned over to the SCSL. Because Taylor still enjoyed considerable support in Liberia, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf requested the trial to be moved to The Hague. The Dutch government called for United Nations Security Council Resolution 1688 to take him but also requested a third country to hold him if convicted, to which the United Kingdom agreed. His trial in Freetown was deemed undesirable for security reasons with UNAMSIL having considerably reduced its presence. United Nations Security Council Resolution 1688 of the 17th of June 2006 allowed the special court to transfer Taylor's case to The Hague, Netherlands, where the physical infrastructure of the International Criminal Court would be used with the trial still being conducted under the SCSL's auspices. Taylor's trial started on the 4th of June 2007, with the first witness appearing the 7th of January 2008. The prosecution rested its case on the 27th of February 2009, and the defense began their case on the 13th of July and rested on the 12th of November 2010. The trial chamber too scheduled the announcement of its verdict on the 26th of April 2012. The verdict was read starting at 11 o'clock by the presiding judge Richard Lussick, who said that. The trial chamber unanimously finds you guilty of aiding and abetting all of these crimes. Acts of terrorism, murder, violence to life, health or physical well-being of persons, rape, sexual slavery, outrages upon personal dignity, violence to life, health and physical or mental well-being of persons, other inhumane acts, a crime against humanity, conscripting or enlisting children under the age of 15 years into the armed forces, enslavement, and pillage in accordance with Article 6.1 of the SCSL statute. His sentence would be announced on 30 May after a hearing in which Taylor would be given the opportunity to speak on 16 May. An appeal could also be filed within 14 days of the decision. Though Taylor had rejected complicity on any of the charges, the court said that he ordered and supported the roof, while the prosecution said that RUF's undermining of a 1999 ceasefire prolonged the war and was financed by Taylor through the proceeds of illegally mined blood diamonds. In reaction to the verdict, Richard Decker, the head of the International Justice Program at Human Rights Watch said, The Taylor verdict is a watershed moment, however it turns out. As president, Taylor is believed to have been responsible for so much murder and mayhem which unfolded in Sierra Leone. His was a shadow that loomed across the region. Christine Cheng of Exeter College, Oxford pointed to the politicization of the trial and the degree to which the trial has been funded by Western states, though she added that the conclusion of Taylor's trial represented a milestone for the pursuit of international justice. The prosecutor Brenda J. Hollis reacted to the verdict in saying, Today is for the people of Sierra Leone who suffered horribly because of Charles Taylor. This judgment brings some measure of justice to the many thousands of victims who paid a terrible price for Mr. Taylor's crimes. Today's historic judgment reinforces the new reality, that heads of state will be held to account for war crimes and other international crimes. This judgment affirms that with leadership comes not just power and authority, but also responsibility and accountability. No person, no matter how powerful, is above the law. 
The judges found that Mr. Taylor aided and abetted the crimes charged in counts 1 through 11, and that he planned with Sam Bokhari the attacks on Kono, McKenney and Freetown in late 1998 and January 1999 during which the charged crimes were committed. The trial chamber's findings made clear the central role Charles Taylor played in the horrific crimes against the people of Sierra Leone. Mr. Taylor's conviction for murder acknowledges the thousands who were brutally killed. These men, women and children were violently taken from their family and friends, and many were killed in remote locations known only to their killers. Victims' families were left destitute, with emotional wounds that will never heal. Richard Falk criticized the trial, arguing that Western powers selectively prosecuted only war criminals who were opposed to Western interests. He also noted that the U.S. has refused the international criminal court jurisdiction over its citizens. Topic. Contempt cases The court has opened two contempt cases. The first was opened in 2005 involved the alleged intimidation of a witness by Brima Samura, an investigator for the defense team in the AFRC case and wives of the defendants, Margaret Brima, Nena Jalo, Esther Kamara, and Anifa Kamara. Samura was acquitted, but all the other defendants were sentenced to one year of probation. The second case was opened in 2011 and involved witness tampering, interference with the administration of justice, and other allegations against Brahma Kamara and Santi G. Kanu, who at the time had already been sentenced for the previous case against them, and Hassan Bangura, Samuel Kargbo, and Eric Sanesi. At a July 2011 preliminary hearing, Kargbo entered a guilty plea, the other four defendants pleaded not guilty. In June 2012, Eric Sanessi was tried and convicted of eight counts of contempt of court. He was sentenced the following month to two years incarceration per count, with each sentence to run concurrently. Kamara, Kanu, and Bangura were also tried in June 2012. In September 2012, they were convicted of contempt of court. Kanu and Bangura were convicted of two counts of interfering with the administration of justice by offering a bribe to a witness and for attempting to induce a witness who had given testimony before the special court to recant. Kamara was convicted for attempting to induce a witness to recant testimony he had previously given as well. In October 2012, Kargbo, Kamara, Kanu, and Bangura were sentenced to prison terms ranging from 18 months suspended for Kargbo to two years on contempt charges stemming from allegations of witness tampering. In 2012, Charles Taylor's lead defense counsel, Curtin A. Griffiths, was accused of disclosing the identities of protected witness. The court ultimately found him not guilty. In October 2012, a seventh defendant, Prince Taylor, was charged with nine counts of contempt of court for witness tampering and interference with the administration of justice. In October 2013, an appeals chamber panel overturned his initial conviction in a 2-1 ruling. Topic. Judgments Topic. AFRC On 20 June 2007, the three suspects in the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council trial, Brima, Kanu, and Kamara, were each convicted of 11 of 14 counts. These were acts of terrorism, collective punishments, extermination, murder, a crime against humanity, murder, a war crime, rape, outrages upon personal dignity, physical violence, a war crime, conscripting or enlisting children under the age of 15 years into armed forces or groups, or using them to participate actively in hostilities, enslavement, and pillage. They were found not guilty of three counts, sexual slavery and any other form of sexual violence, other inhumane act, forced marriage, and other inhumane acts, a crime against humanity, these were the first judgments from the SCSL, as well as the first time ever that an international court ruled on charges related to child soldiers or forced marriage, and the first time an international court delivered a guilty verdict for the military conscription of children. On 19 July 2007, Alex Tamba Brima and Santi G. Borber Kanu were sentenced to 50 years in jail, while Brima Kamara was sentenced to 45 years imprisonment. On the 22nd of February 2008, the appeals chamber did denied their appeal and reaffirmed the verdicts. <inaudible> CDF 
On 2 August 2007, the two surviving CDF defendants, Kandewa and Fafana, were convicted of murder, cruel treatment, pillage and collective punishments. Kandewa was further found guilty of use of child soldiers. The CDF trial was perhaps the most controversial as many Sierra Leoneans considered the CDF to be protecting them from the depredations of the roof. On 9 October 2007, the court decided on the punishment. Kandewa was sentenced to eight years imprisonment, Fafana got six years. These sentences were considered a success for the defense as the prosecutors had asked for 30 years imprisonment for both. The court imposed a lesser sentence because it saw some mitigating factors. These included the CDF's efforts to restore Sierra Leone's democratically elected government which, the trial chamber noted, contributed immensely to re-establishing the rule of law in this country where criminality, anarchy and lawlessness had become the order of the day." On appellate judgments announced on 28 May 2008, the appeals chamber overturned convictions of both defendants on the collective punishments charge as well as Condue's conviction for the use of child soldiers. However, the appeals chamber also entered new convictions against both for murder and inhumane acts as crimes against humanity. The appeals chamber also enhanced the sentences against the two, with the result that Fafana will serve 15 years and Kandewa will serve 20 years. Roof <inaudible> 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 On 25 February 2009, convictions of each of the three roof defendants were handed down. Issa Sisse and Morris Callan were each found guilty on 16 of the 18 counts on which they had been charged. Augustine Gbao was found guilty of 14 of the 18 charges. Convictions were entered on charges including murder, enlistment of child soldiers, amputation, sexual slavery and forced marriage. The three were all convicted on charges of forced marriage, the first such convictions ever handed down in an international criminal court. All three had pleaded not guilty and shook their heads as the judgment was read. Sentences were handed down on 8 April 2009. Sisse received 52 years, Callan 40 years and GBAO 25 years. The convictions and sentences were appealed and, on 26 October 2009, the appeals chamber handed down an opinion denying that appeal. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Taylor On 26 April 2012, Charles Taylor was convicted on all 11 counts with which he remained charged. He was previously acquitted of ordering war crimes and of joint conspiracy. On 30 May 2012, he was sentenced to a term of 50 years in prison. See also Rule of Law in Armed Conflicts Project